Okay, hello. So welcome back again to Gensomnia Nights. And for tonight, I'll be your main host. I'm Matthew Balayo. And joining me is my co-host, Jack. Hello, I you? am M. Jack Pacheco. Hi, Jack. Magandang gabi, magandang gabi. And Masya tonight, dyan. we have a very special guest, no? Kaibigan ng ating producer. So, from Bacolod, if I'm not mistaken. Ilo, 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 ilo. Ilo, ilo. Oh, sorry, ilo, ilo. malapit na, malapit na. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. From Ilo, ilo, we have Alfonso. Alfonso. Di pa Wait, I'll remember your last name, ah. Wait lang. Joke, I'll, I'll search the, ano na lang. Alfonso, di pa nagrasa. Hi, Alfonso. Hello. Hi. So, hello. Welcome. Hello. Is this your first time in a podcast? This is, in fact, my first time on a podcast. Wow. Nice. Mm. So, you're not nervous? Not really. I've done voice calls before. I've, and, uh, and if you want to get anywhere in my profession, you have to be, get used to the limelight. Well, as small oh, a limelight okay. as this. What's your profession? What is your profession? I'm trying to break into writing, creative writing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start as an essayist, probably. Mm. What, what sort of things do you write about? I, I write about just about anything, but mostly about society and my relationship with, you know, how I see the world. Okay, nice. Wait, Don't so you, fin- you took up creative writing? I- I'm currently taking a degree in creative writing in UP Dilemma. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Hello, oh, UP Dilemma. We have an ISCO over here. Yeah. So you're not, you're not currently in Bacolod right now? Ilo-ilo nga. I am in Ilo-ilo. Ah, Ilo-ilo, sorry. Mad <laughs> kasi. Not... <laughs> well, I, I was mistaken. Okay, so yeah. We have yeah. Alfonso. Wait, what year are you now in? In creative writing? I am in second year, I think. Second year, oh, nice. second sem. Is it, is it hard? Wait, no, no. Ah, first year, first year. Sorry, sorry. Oh, it's... okay. So you just started. Yeah, I had to take back classes that, that don't technically count because oh, my before. my degree is in something else. Before creative writing. Which is... Yeah, I, I, this is an MA level course. Ah, mm. okay. I thought you were still in undergrad. Sorry, you look very young, eh? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, what was your bachelor's? My bachelor's was in... Psychology. It used to be BS Psychology, then I shifted out because I didn't want to take med. So I shifted into AB Psychology. Ah, so there's a difference did you, between did you finish it? BS? Yeah, I AB. did finish it. There's a difference between BS and AB? Yeah, in Ateneo. At oh, least. Wow, the big four, ah. Huh? Yes, you're completing it. Nice. <laughs> why, why, if, I, if you don't mind, why did you pick those two schools that you studied in for your ma- for your bachelor's and master's? It was... Uh, I didn't make it into UP Diliman for my bachelor's because, uh, because I got relatively low scores in Filipino. I got like 80% in Filipino. I didn't pass the UPCAT as well. <laughs> yeah. No, I made it into Visayas, but they didn't have the course I was offering that I wanted. Okay. I, 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 ma- I passed the ASED though, so I went to Ateneo instead. And it was okay. a pretty positive experience. Mm, really? How's that how's that like though, like leaving your hometown of Iloilo to live in Manila? Wasn't that bad. Some people get homesick. Oh, ah okay. Ah okay, nice. I keep hmm. forgetting na ano eh. Akala ko may Ateneo sa ano, sa Visayas or something. <laughs> Meron ba? Why? Wala ba? Mm, I, I'm Wala not sure. There eh. is one in Mindanao. Ateneo de Dabao. Amin, amin, amin de na, ayun. Ateneo de Dabao. Okay. Oh, alam ko maraming at, Ateneo yeah. na. No, no. Okay, There's... so now you're focused on creative writing, right, Alfonso? Yeah. So tell us about that. Like, tell us about being a creative writer. I mean, wow. I mean, I personally, sorry, yeah, like, I want to be a writer as well. I took up film, but yung course mo na yan, yung masters ng creative writing I, that's yan talaga yung gusto kong ano course nung ano before sa so, DLSU pa actually pero 
wala, hindi ako pinagpalad and it's fine without even if I even if I took it, I wouldn't met meet this amazing friends of mine. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You guys so, are cool. So yeah, it, it all went well anyway. So yeah, mm-hmm. that was about creative writing. It's, it's, well, first off, most of the classes are canceled because of COVID. So I don't really have a lot of experience. But have you ever done writing workshops? Well, you know, in my experience as a writer, every day is a writing workshop. That's pretty <laughs> deep. Yung Ang workshop, literal yun na may ano, na may isang master na nagtuturo, di ba? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I went to one. Um, You're familiar with, ano, forgot his, I, think, I forgot his name. It was only a one-day free seminar kasi, workshop, whatever. It was during the National Bookstore Festival ata. Mm-hmm. Basta yun. Um, really? His name, no, no, not really. Hindi, hindi siya ano, hindi, it's not film-related. Um, Dalisai. His name is Dalisai. Are you familiar with him? Which Dalisai? Yeah. He's an old yeah, man. Yeah, well... I've, re- I've read some of his work. familiar. Yeah, he's he's good. He was actually late during our workshop, but even if he was late, and the workshop was like two hours only, he made the most out of it. I mean, there's something with like writers, especially when they've like, you know, when I, w- I wouldn't say old, but when they're very... Mature enough and they've reached that certain level. They've become, yeah. they're, they're so wise. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that's true with yeah. most people. Yeah. So, uh, who who are your influences? Writing influences? Influences. For my essays, I'd have to say the big one would be George Orwell. Mm, Ooh, likewise. Good choice. Love Orwell. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, he he was a George Orwell and Roald Dahl. Oh, nice. How about local? I know local authors. Do you have any local any, authors? Like... Let me think. Uh, there was someone whose name I'm not. I'm not, I'm not sure. For stories, I uh, I'd say that I I have a lot of respect for Christina Pan. Doha Hidalgo. I'm not sure how you pronounce her name. Sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Well, I, I'm not actually that well versed in Philippine literature in that are written in English. Mm. Well, besides Nick Joaquin, I guess. Yeah. Or Babong. Who is not? I swear to God. Speak, speak. Oh, I know, Alfonso, speaking of essays, like, she's my favorite. Are you familiar with Joan Didion? Joan Didion? No, sorry, I'm not. Oh, she's like, I know, she's American author. Parang, wala lang. I, I just saw her book, like, in a book sale, then I, I like reading it. Then, okay, like, she's great. And, yun nga, I found out, like, she's mostly started, like, with essays and shit. I mean, most of her work is nonfiction, and, yeah. Oh, Share that. I remember his name. Uh, my old teacher, I guess, uh, Sir Martin Villanueva. He recently released a book of essays. What's that book? Have you had experience in that regard, publishing? Publishing, I, mean... r- I published two articles for Rappler, but other than that, no. Oh yeah, I, I just read your you ano, article in Rappler. Tell us about that. Well, it's one of the most deeply personal things I've written. Eh, you know, I, I just have this tortured relationship with God and faith. Well, well, Don't in, my, we all. in my case, it, it was less about God and more about the the structure of the organized religion. I, I. Growing up, were you also in a Catholic school? I was. That's where I met <laughs> Say, Alonso. I'm not Catholic, but Baptist. But it's the same bullshit, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> Are you still practicing, though, Alfonso? I do not practice. I am lapsed. I do not practice any religion. But how, what did you mean when you said that you had a tortured relationship with God and faith? It wasn't easy becoming an agnostic. I, I identify as an agnostic. Mm, you are an agnostic. Same. Yeah. It wasn't easy. I had to do a lot of 
reflection, which, you know, at my age was really hard and and with all the other things going on. And I, I yeah. I, I is it hard for you to talk about this now, if you don't mind? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. I mean, it is, but nothing worth doing is easy. How about sharing, like, an experience where, like, you know, where you actually felt that disconnect with, like, religion? Because I think we all have that, you know, being agnostic mm. and all. But like, there's something that woke us up to the... I really want to say bullshit because that's how I hate and despise religion now. I don't hate and despise religion. Let let, let me put that on the record. Thank sure. you for saying that. It's, Thank on, you it's for on the record. That. But on for me, on the record, I hate and despise religion. Okay. <laughs> Valid. Well, as long as you respect it, Matt. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, mean, I think you could hate something but still also respect it, right? Uh, Not, sure, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we all, we all have our own different beliefs and... Faith, yeah, it's, I guess. It's, a matter it's like when, of... I pa- when every time I pass by a church, I will just like, like I'll keep my anger inside. But you know, see, that's the respect. Restraint, pala yun, <laughs> Yeah. Well. Okay, so uh, this is kind of going to be kind of a long one. Sure. No, we have time. We have. The all right, time. all right. So and we want to hear it, and we want to hear it. It's always my... fun to hear. My school uh, was uh, very active during the RH bill debate. Very, very active. <laughs> Do you want to mention this school? Um, I don't think I will. Sure. <laughs> Safe answer. Uh, uh, my school was very active in the... RH law debate. Well, it was the RH bill back then. Uh, and uh, we were quote unquote required to go to the the rallies. And well, really, we, technically, we weren't required, but anyone who didn't go was required to have class. See, that's bullshit. So that right? was kind of kind of low key require a requirement. Yeah, would you uh, say so? So, but exactly. And no one went to the extra class, so everyone just ended up going. So you did, you did go. I did go, but you did not want to. Uh, not really, but it, it was okay. It was an it was a nice opportunity to skip class. And you know, they were making all these criticisms, and none of all of them just seemed. I I couldn't get behind all of them. They were just so emotionally charged and they ignored the what was actually in the bill like young people tend to be that way no no the the speakers they were bishops archbishops and and i won't name any of them and honestly i forget oh, so this so this is where the religion comes in y- yeah, yeah this is where religion yeah. comes let him, in Jack, let alfonso finish it's a long story yeah uh so yeah mostly my memories of that are just eating peanuts with my friends because the peanut vendor would come over. That's cute. That certain memory of eating peanuts. I like that. <laughs> uh, and there were a bunch of other schools. Like, virtually every other Catholic school in Iloilo was was involved in some way. And I just didn't get the fervor. There were some parents who were really, 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 really into it they they were they had like placards and protest signs and Mm -hmm. yeah and all of it just seemed surreal to me how so it just felt like this surge of it it felt i guess it kind of was a political rally in a way but it felt like a really big political rally like a like this phenomenon and the, and but at, at that time, ba, did you did you know what you were fighting for, or were I, you still confused about it? I am I am always confused. I have never been. I can't say I I've been fighting for anything. My my article is about my confusion. I'm still confused. 
but you uh, but i suppose from what i can gather you wouldn't really call yourself a man with political proclivities or yep. would you yep i would i'm a well i can i kind of get you i kind of get you Imagine I'm of the your article, I know, the hypocrisy of the Catholic Church. Tell us about that. Okay, so uh, I was already agnostic by then, but I remembered when Pope Francis came over to visit and the Philippines started, you know, hiding. That was 2016, 2015, 2016. I think 2015, I think. 2015. They started hiding street yeah, children. 2015. They started hiding street children. We we have never done that for any yes. world leader. Yes. I remember have, that. I remember that. We have we, we didn't do it for Obama. We didn't do it for Ban Ki moon. Yeah. We didn't do it for Shinzo Abe or I think I think David Cameron was the UK Prime Minister at the time. We didn't do it for even during the ASEAN summit. We didn't do it. Just and the Pope wanted to see the 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 street children, the all these homeless people. Right, de ba? Yun yung message niya. Yun yung pinaka ano niya, de ba? I know. It's just so. I'm. Uh, I I like the Pope, the current Pope. He's. He's okay. He's as okay as his institution allows him to be. Yeah. But, yeah, that's, that's, these, I mean, this was the fault of the government, but I, the way I, the way everyone just tacitly accepted it was just so, can we swear on this podcast or is it? Sure. It was just so fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Fucked up talaga. Share ko yeah. lang, wala lang. I remember when the Pope came. So, the, the, the classes were cancelled. I didn't I didn't know that classes were cancelled. So, I went to school. Why is why is no one in school? Oh my <laughs> Pala, God. Yeah, the, the Pope came. So, wala lang. Sayang. Uwian pa naman ako. Anyway, wala lang. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah I, I get what you said about na uh, yun, yung about the hiding the street children and stuff. I mean, I get it. It's very political. But it's connected. Like, because, diba, the Pope. Yeah, oh, religion and politics have always been connected. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything involving three or more people is political. You know, I read the quote once. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot who it was from, but it was a nice quote. It said, uh, uh, regular people have faith in religion. Intelligent people don't. But the politicians use it intellectually. I don't think it's as simple as that. Or wisely uh, was the word, I think. Why do you say so it's not simple like that? Religion is... Uh, I've studied the philosophy and psychology of religion, and religion is... it's Essentially, it's part of human nature to want to believe in a higher power. It's yeah, not, yeah. It's not as simple as just, I want to control these people. Uh, I, I, I don't think that... I. I might have at one point. I'm not sure. I, that memory is kind of hazy, but I don't anymore. I, oh, I just remembered something. Yeah. Do 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 you watch Rick and Morty, Alfonso? I used to, but it was too cynical, so I I stopped. Uh, oh, I, cynical. I mean, yeah, that's the best word to describe Rick. <laughs> it's so cynical. But, yeah, but no, I like stupid cartoons like that. I share. So yeah, there's a, there's an episode where the I know. Where the big giant alien head. Jack, you remember that episode? Yeah, yeah, that was... Mm. Oh, do you remember? Diba? That was... The, you show me what you got. <laughs> then, when 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 the whole Earth was like, you, you know, ano yun? Parang they were like worrying about and parang, they, parang naging higher power nila yung, ano, yung alien na yun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wala lang. It's like a great satire take on, you know, yeah. how people like surrender their faith and surrender everything to a higher pero yung sa episode na yun literal eh kasi nga nakikita nila yung god di ba <laughs> pero hindi nila alam na si si Rick lang gumagawa nung ano nung yung yung mga pinagagawa nila di ba yung, yung stupid shit na pinagawa nila yung parang yung sinacrifice nila yung mga evil doers yung balloon pinalipad nila grabe <laughs> nakakatawa yeah uh, 
But you know, even these stupid cartoons, as you say, they are, they can still, at the same time, tell stories about mankind. Of course. For, exa- yeah. for example, that the episode that you, cartoon, you were just the more amazing it is. For example, that episode that you were just describing, I feel like it was uh, an invitation to look upon who we are. Because what if there was this ent- entity asking them, what do you got? And this is all they have to show from that, for, from, for, for him. Mm-hmm. Wow, nice diba? take. Uh, nice take on that episode. Yeah. That's all they have. That's all humanity has to offer. You know, rapping and dancing about, you know, underwear or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And like, and like shitting your pants, diba? Sabi nga. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, so Alfonso, like, go. Tell us more about, you know, your, your being agnostic and your road to, road to Tuloy. Your, your journey on Perdition. how you discovered okay. What I, the one very big, very, very big reason why, probably the main reason, if I, now that I think about it, that I left the Catholic Church is because I did research and I saw that these, these things that, that the Catholic Church preaches are, they, they, they're artificial. They're, it's root. Yeah, uh, I I'm not sure how to put it. Like for instance, uh, they say that they only worship one God, right? Yeah. Yeah. But when I did research, the there are the they worship they worship a lot. Catholicism Catholicism is basically just polytheism pretending to be monotheism. And that goes against Ooh, the... I have more. not heard that before. But what do you mean like they worship other gods? Think about it. You pray to the Virgin Mary. You pray to the saints. You kneel in front of... You kneel in front of statues of them. You you offer devotions to them. Isn't that basically just worship? But what did Actually, you believe in? And wait lang. So, like, if you studied about this. So, what do you think is like the Catholic church how do they like i know parang how do they defend their beliefs on worshiping one god okay pala, and dami nga nilang ina, ano. i was taught this in grade school uh there are apparently different forms of devotion which is just such a strange concept to me there's 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 dulia which is devotion to the saints hyperdulia which is devotion to mary and latria which is Worship of God, which can only be given to God, but none of that makes sense to me. For all intents yeah. and purposes, what they're doing with Mary and the saints—that is worship. And is that a bad thing? Are you saying that that's a bad thing? I'm not saying that polytheism is bad, but if you want to be a polytheist, you own it. Like Hinduism, they say we worship many gods, and well, yeah. it seems to me, it seems to me as if you're just basically schooling or you know, schooling religion or deconstructing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to argue that, you know, Shit, individu- yung I- <laughs> individual individual faith should be should not be contingent upon these these uh these vague nuances in religion or even the politics of a religion. If you have individual faith, that should be all that matters to you. Mm. So I guess what I'm asking is, what was it for you? Did you ever have faith? Or what did you believe in before you started deconstructing these ideas? There was a phase in my life when I was really hardcore in the religion. That was when I was like 12. Tell us about mm-hmm. being hardcore in religion. I I was I was I I did prayers. I I urged my family to go to church every Sunday and because Same. I wanted to live a good life. Okay. Uh, even even as a kid, I wanted to live a good life. Yeah. So you and thought parang, that diba, as a religion kid, was we're important. Taught na, like, you know, syempre, parang we were taught to obey our parents and stuff, but the fact that our parents mostly are, of course, I mean, majority of Filipino families are religious. So parang, diba, parang we're used to following what they say. Yeah. Parang, nga eh, parang we're, we're all human. We all make our own thoughts. And like, I feel like for me, because growing up, 
like I always questioned everything. As, as I came from a Christian school as well. So and it didn't make sense to me. Kaya parang alam mo, parang bata pa lang ako, na radicalized na talaga if Yep. Yep, that was that was and, me and, too. I'm, and I'm also gay, so diba, it contradicts with everything what the religion says about homosexuality. So diba, it's chaos. But you know, I still hear living, hating religion, and there's okay. it. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Hi. Sorry, yeah, like religion talk hy- hypes me up and like, you know, because like me parang, too. Parang, I could sue the Catholic. If I could sue religion for giving me the trauma that I have endured all this, all my life. Then again, do you understand? It wasn't really religion that gave you these traumas, these bad experiences. It was the people who were using them, right? It was these people, your parents, yeah, for yeah, instance, yeah, yeah. your family, your people around you, your teachers, uh, our politicians. These, these are the people who are, you know, twisting religion into something that it that. Leaves, leaves leaves to be undesired or uh-huh. hated. I spelled the J and oh my god. <laughs> oh. Okay, so... You can say that again. Uh, I'd like to add to that and say it's more than just the people, it's the institutions. Itself, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, can I segue into something related, but, go, you know, kind go. of... Okay, so... I don't think it's possible to talk about my relationship with religion, with the Catholic Church, without talking about what Jesus said. What did Jesus say? He said a lot of things. Jesus did say a lot of things, but the thing I'm concerned with the most is his teaching on wealth. He said you can't serve Mm -hmm. God and money, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, I I read that on your article. You can't serve God and mammon. That, that that was an old tiny word for money and but you see the church hoards so much wealth for itself it, it, the churches i read an article that said that the church's wealth is literally incalculable to this day yeah and uh, okay totoo yan nako they have so much wealth what happened to the church being a church of the poor so, okay, so I did some research, and apparently the church was made by, not by its original worshippers, who were the people of Jerusalem, but by the Roman Empire, a.k.a. the people that killed Christ in the first place. Mm-hmm. Pontius Pilate. Uh, they were the people that killed Christ in the first place. <laughs> and... God, there's some really sick irony that, you know, because Jerusalem was basically like colonized by the Roman Empire. It's not as simple as that, but it was it was under the thumb of the Roman Empire, the same way we were, yeah. were under Spain and America. The Romans wanted to take all over the world, diba? Right? <laughs> yeah. Look where that got them. And it's uh, it's an irony that someone who preached the, the message that Jesus did ended up being the god of the Roman Empire. For, for millennia. Well, see, that's that's where you ha- that's why you, ha- you you really have to separate the church from religion from the faith. Because mm-hmm. the the church is a is is man's construct. Do do you follow me? I follow you. I follow you. Reli- but religion is something that's been shared for millennia, as you said. Mm-hmm. And its original intention was, you know, to to drive us together as human beings mm-hmm. uh, to. It's basically just a guideline to be a good man mm-hmm. and to not do evil and do good, you know, and charity and love and all that. But then the church, which is man's invention, it turns that into something else. Uh, the church, you know, as you said, uh, gets profit from it, profits from it, which is a bad thing. And we can go 12 rounds on whether, you know, what is this and what is that. But at the end of the day, religion is... I would like to argue that religion is something personal to the individual. Okay. It's something that you have at the end of a really bad day or you know when you just want to give up it's the 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 voice that calls you to religion or strive faith? on. Yeah. I get you. I get it's, you. I, I suppose it's the same thing but religion has been has ha- had bad connotations to the word because of the church like mm-hmm. you said. Mm-hmm. 
And I think that's the bad thing, you know? Shout out yeah. to our producer Enzo. Ang religion niya, I love. You know, I, I used to be a hardcore Catholic, as you said. Mm-hmm. I used to be a hardcore Catholic as well in my childhood. But then I grew up, I grew up to be an atheist. But then having lived my life so far, I get these days where I just, you know, I just w- secretly wish that, you know, I still believed in Jesus and I had still had this faith. God. And I suppose in some sense, I still do. I suppose in some sense, I still do. But I, I just don't subscribe to the politics of it all. It's yeah, just, you know, better for me to have it and on my own. Like to add to in, that, in my a lot own of way, the younger just... generation now, a lot of them actually are more. How do you say? I wouldn't say like they strayed away from the church, but parang ganon. Yung parang mas faith na lang yung ano nila. Parang they still have like a personal relationship with yeah. Jesus or whatever entity exactly. they have, de ba? Pero parang I think a lot of the younger generation now are becoming more knowledgeable about the world and stuff. And parang they're seeing Which now is also that a good religion thing. is an institution. Nga, and diba? Right. We don't like being we don't like institutions here. Alright, yeah. Okay. So let me respond to that. Uh well, you see, when I got disillusioned with uh the structure of religion, like you said, with the man made stuff. Well, okay. Past my childhood, I didn't really have a very strong faith, personal faith. And when I, and when I, and when I lapsed into agnosticism, I guess there was no alternative for me, but, but just atheism and agnosticism, there was no ready alternative. I, 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 uh, did you believe in, did you believe in an afterlife? I have no idea. Did I believe or do I believe? I mean, I just, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, do you believe in an afterlife? I mean, before when you were still religious or until now? I did believe in heaven and hell back when I was religion, religious. But now I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure if we'll ever know for sure. Diba? Wala naman talaga makakaalam eh. Yeah. Ako nung naging agnostic ako, wala, parang I've come to terms with the fact that once we're dead, we're just like, you know, all black. Like, yeah, we nothing. cease to exist. You okay. become worm food. Yeah, yun na lang. Exactly. We, yung physical bodies natin, wala. Pero I feel like with religion kasi, di ba, parang yung soul ang ano, di ba? Parang, you know, the, 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 the soul, the soul is, will go to heaven. Goes to a hard, heaven, high place. Or, yeah, pero yun yeah, nga eh. Yun that yun whole, the whole concept of heaven and hell is, ah, uh, kasi nga, di ba, if you're bad, you go, to he- you go to hell. If you're good, you go to heaven. So parang, and like, add, to add with what we talked about kanina, about like, religion and politics, and do you see our politicians who are very religious? Would you, parang, do you want them to be in heaven? My God. Mm, yeah. You know, the logical man in me agrees. Hypocrisy. There's no... There's no life after this. When we die, we're worm food. But, you know, the believer in me wants to believe that there has to be something better than this. <laughs> there has to Jack, be something do, better than this. Jack, do you believe in life after love? I guess. I guess I agree <laughs> I was with afraid, you. I was afraid you were going to ask that question tonight. Do you believe in life after love? <laughs> yeah, I <wala. laughs> Yeah. Uh, so... Any more questions? I don't. Uh, oh, how, how, anyway, so like, tell us more about, ano, like, about creative writing. What do you like about it? Well, for one, it gives me a social group, which I needed after graduation. Uh, uh, Why? Well, I, I took a year off and I was like, should I get a job or should I go to grad school? And I decided, hey, why not just go to grad school? Because okay. getting a job is kind of a bitch. Same. Yeah. So how has the experience has treated you so far? It's it's pretty good. It was cut short because of COVID. Yeah. But yeah, it's been treating me pretty well so far. I sense a tone of doubt in your voice from your... It's pretty good. <laughs> I am pretty doubtful because... I don't have much experience yet, so I'm not sure if I can really give a verdict. 
I can give a verdict on mm-hmm. my undergrad studies, even if I ultimately didn't take what I wanted to. I had a very positive experience. And I, okay, okay, this this might be the place to go back to religion. And I see how religion Absolutely. can also give people strength and uh-huh. do a lot of good. True, true. Okay. But then it turns to something else. It becomes vanity. And then that's where holy wars start. You know, are, are you Catholic? No, I'm a Muslim. Okay, screw you. No, I'm a Buddhist. Oh, you're gay or whatever. Yeah. That, that's a bad thing about the religion. Yeah, ISIS yun stuff, yun, right? Kasi yung religion ng mga pinaninibalaan pa rin ng mga tao ngayon, yung naka-ancient times pa rin. Diba? Mm-hmm. Parang, mm. na, ewan, like, if I, parang, I can't remember a specific thing, but, diba, like, religion wasn't really good to women or any, diba? Yeah. I mean, so, parang, ewan ko, parang ngayon, ganun pa din eh. I know. Diba? So, parang, napaka-ancient, napaka-archaic ng mga beliefs pa rin. Pero, we're not even in that time anymore. So, parang, parang, it should evolve as well. And, like, Jesus, diba, if, like, if Jesus was, like, you know, alive now, I'm pretty sure he would be friends with the gay, the minorities, mm-hmm. diba? Would. Kasi, kasi Pero, hindi updated eh. Siguro kailangan lang talaga maging updated yung Biblia. Yun nga eh, update nila yung app nila. Diyos ko, ano Ang yan? bagong balita. <laughs> Buksan mo ang iyong smartphone at hanapin mo sa Google ang mga minsang sinabi ni Jesus noong unang panahon. <laughs> oh, nagbabasa ka ba ng Bible, Jack? Hanggang ngayon? Yeah, of course. Of course. I never really Ikaw stopped, Alfonso. you know, since I was a child. The Bible is beautiful prose. Yes, it is. It is. If I would read any part Very. of the Bible, it would be the ano, yung Psalms kasi it looks like it mean looks like poetry. Yeah, you know, actually, drawing from drawing from the topics we're discussing, uh, we, you know, we talk about writing in religion, mm-hmm. and I would like to say that sometimes I feel as though there's really no difference between the two. You know, sometimes I see, you know, actually, most of the time I see my writing as my religion. Mm. It's you know where I vent out and where it's where I draw strength from, in a sense. All right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I feel would like... Would you agree? Yeah, I would. Yeah, well... I'm not sure. Kasi diba, I mean, if you, ano, if you actually... Parang, like, being agnostic now. If, like, if you... Parang, once you're used to, like, a certain religion, like Catholicism or what, tapos when you leave it, parang, it's hard, diba? You feel lost and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think that happened naman. So, parang, you're going to find, like, anything about... You're gonna you're going to find something that will help you like fill that void. Yeah. On that note, uh yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. Anything else you want to ask? No. Mm-hmm. I mean I I, think, I I like this conversation that we're having now. This is our most like substantial podcast that we had yet. Thank you, Alphonse. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I wish you good luck in your on divorce. Thank you, thank of course. you. Of course, and I hope in the future we get to see more. We have, mm. we hope to see you publish. You know, mm. that's what you want, that ba? Yeah, I do. I, I, I definitely yes. want like, more exposure. I think all writers want that, naman, diba? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. If, if you want me to guest star again, uh, just message me. Please, yes, of course. All right. I mean, like, you have interesting topics to share, and mm-hmm. you seem like the kind of person to, that would share a lot about, yeah. you know, interesting topics. I see, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. So, I guess that's all that the time mm-hmm. we have for tonight. Well, we still, again, we still have five minutes. Where's the next Abe? Si producer. Okay, so yeah, fine. Since we have this up, uh, Alfonso, tell us, tell us something personal, if you don't mind. Let me think. Well, okay, just as uh, one last thing, I also think mm-hmm. that the way Catholicism treats the LGBT community, you know, the gay community, is pretty shit, <laughs> honestly. I think it's really uh, condescending, yes. even yes. the liberal teachings. But if I, if I was to elaborate, 
we'd be mm. here all night. We'd be <laughs> here until the sun comes up. Yeah. yeah so, so ironic, no? That na parang na the Catholic Church hates the LGBT, pero a lot of a lot of priests are closeted gay men. So, ooh, putting it out there. So, <laughs> uh, not gonna name names, but you know. Ooh, may kilala ka, may kilala ka. Eee! I'm not saying anything. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Of course, na it's. I mean, it's bad to out people who are in the closet, naman. But at the same time, kasi like if you're someone who you know is in the working or whatever in the Catholic Church, parang goes against with everything, di ba? Parang, I feel, parang feeling ko ang tortured ng mga yun. Pero yeah, I hope they see the light then. <laughs> Alright, I think that's, I think that's a good place to end things. Yes. Mm-hmm. Alright, see you okay. guys. So, thank you, Alfonso. Thank you. And once again, this has been Jinsomnia Nights. I am your host, Matthew Pelayo. Hi. And my co-host, M. Jack Pacheco. Co-host, nasaan ka? Nasaan ka ba ba? I-, I think his camera's frozen. Oh! Co-host, babalik ka. Nasaan ka? Nasaan ka ba ba? Mm. I'm always ah. here. Especially when I'm oh. not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, sige. So yeah, thank you for listening to our podcast. And... It was a privilege to be yes. here. Thank you, Alfonso. Likewise. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you. And...